Welcome to Straight Brother Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot show for you today. Today's show topic is Navigating Life After a Breakup. Steps to Move Forward. Let's do it. to the show. She's a woman of God, a multifaceted entrepreneur, author, mentor, coach, speaker, a graduate of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. She obtained a graduate degree in education and is a teacher based in Memphis, Tennessee, and serves as an intervention teacher for middle school students, amongst other accolades and accomplishments that are too many to name. Let's give a round of applause for author Chanel Jackson. Welcome to the Straight Brother Dating and Relationship Talk. Chanel, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Great, great to hear. <laughs> Lovely smile, by the way. Thank you. Now, are you nervous? Just maybe a little bit. Just okay. a little bit. <laughs> All right, well, that's that's understandable to be to be nervous sometimes. I'm nervous, and I've been doing this for about four months, but <laughs> haven't done it in a few weeks. But I'm nervous sometimes. You got to get those uh, butterflies out. So, Shamel, I read an excerpt in one of your works that said you committed to practicing abstinence until marriage. Do you still hold firm to that commitment? Yes. Yes, great, great. It also went on to say that your commitment to practicing abstinence inspired you to create Breaking It Down with C. Jackson, a platform aimed at empowering teenagers to make informed decisions about sexual activity through the lens of God's word and the experiences of others. It says you expanded your reach by self-publishing your first book, Wait, which means women and intimate tales, where 11 women openly discussed sexual topics to guide young ladies in making educated choices. It also said that you also serve as a mentor to singles, helping to empower them to live a life of sexual purity. Now, I also read in the excerpt that the end of a significant relationship in 2018 became a catalyst for your second book. Girl, forget all that. Moving forward after a relationship ends, where you share your intimate breakup experiences and the healing process. Authentically and transparently, you empower Christian women to embrace the abundant life after a breakup, guiding them to live their best life. This personal journey led you to reevaluate your mission, focusing on assisting single Christian women in understanding their identity in Christ, overcoming rejection, building confidence, and fulfilling their God-given purpose. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we can end the show on that right now. But we won't. That's absolutely awesome. And I just want to commend you on your accomplishments. Thank you. And uh, you are truly a woman of God. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Shamel, how old were you when you committed to practicing abstinence? I was 16. 16 years of age. 16 years old. <laughs> wow. That's pretty young. Now, were you inspired by your mother, uh, by God, by your church? Who were you inspired by to make that commitment at such a young age? It was a combination of all those things you just said. Of course, my parents uh, always told me to just wait till you married to have sex, but it was the church that really built the foundation okay. on why I should. So it was both of them together. Okay. All, together. all right. So... The breakup of your 2018 relationship is what inspired you to write your current book, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you expound? Um, I had just, it was summer 2018, and I had been in a long-distance relationship about four years, and um, we broke up in June, 
And after that, I was I was devastated because I've been in a relationship for that was a long time. That's the longest relationship I've ever been in. And of course, at that age, you are normally typically thinking about marriage if you're dating. If you want to be married and you're dating, you're thinking about, you know, if I want to marry this person. So that was a talk around that. And so of course I love this person. So when he decided to end the relationship, I I just I didn't know where all these feelings were coming from. I never felt that way. Um, and I know I had other relationships, but those when I was younger, and I wasn't really like that serious. It wasn't serious as this one was. Yes. And so, um, as I began to journal out my feelings and just talk to my friends about it, I just started, God said, wrote, write a book. Because I was actually looking for a book myself to help me. And I didn't, at that point, I did not find any that... For Christian women, there were a lot of secular books, but I really wanted to find one for Christians. So, but at that time, I did not see any. So, God said, "Write your own. Um, write out what you're doing at, in your healing process." And so, that's where "Girl, Forget All That" came from, because I wanted the women to know this: you are not alone in this uh, journey. And so, I want them to see the real, raw emotions that come from healing from a breakup. Okay. All right. So between the time of your breakup in 2018 till the release of your current book, Girl, Forget All That, Moving Forward After a Relationship Ends in 2023, that's five years. Why so long before this book release? Well, actually, before I released this book, there was another version that came out in 2019, and it was originally supposed to be two parts. Um, the first part was me telling part of the story of my healing process. And then I had other women share their difficult breakups as well. Um, just to have a variety of women sharing, like it's all, we've all been hurt before. You're not alone. And so, but as, um, going with when COVID came, I started trying to rewrite, well, not rewrite, write the second part to it to talk about the rest of the healing process. It just wasn't working out. And so eventually I experienced some other things um, that I talk about in the book. It was regarding dating um, that led me to just not do a part two and just start everything over and just write about me. Don't add any other women, just your whole process of healing from this breakup, going back into the dating scene and you know what, how you were blessed after the breakup. So now you have the new version, girl, forget all that. All right. Well, ladies, <laughs> You're hearing it from a woman of God who's telling you that she's practicing abstinence. And abstinence is not a bad thing. God gives us a roadmap to how he wants us to conduct ourselves to manage our lives. And most of us, and I'll say all of us except Jesus Christ, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the thing is, but God knows the best direction for us to go. Even though our flesh may burn, God don't want us to burn in lust. He says if we uh, must burn in lust is better for us to marry than to burn in lust. So, I like uh, your assessment of uh, how you uh, came to the conclusion of writing your book. Uh, you had other things that happened that you end up incorporating in the, this new book. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Right. Now, was the dating the guy that you were dating your ex? I'll mm -hmm. say was he a believer in Jesus Christ? Yes, he was. A believer in Jesus Christ. Okay, that's great because. As you know, <laughs> what, does, what does God say? Uh, Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. So let me say this, Christian women and Christian men, I don't care how fine a man is, ladies, or how pretty a woman is, men, do not even put yourself in that position to allow your emotions to get involved because your emotions will get involved with somebody who's not saved. He may be a Muslim. He may be a Buddhist. He may practice another faith that doesn't uh, align with uh, the Christian faith. He may not believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. If he does not, then you stay away from him as it relates to trying to be romantic with him because he's not the one. God has already given you that uh, precept in his word. So don't try to deviate from that because if you do, you're going to be in sin. Now, you do have some Christians who have gone that route and their marriage is working out but God told you not to go that route I mean because at some point in time how can two walk together unless they be in agreement okay now were you and your ex dating with intentions to marry at some point 
yes, we did talk about marriage um, and just things you to prepare for marriage. So there was a lot of conversation at, about the at the beginning of the relationship. Okay. What well, what about throughout the relationship? Now, was this a long distance relationship as well, or was this uh, a relationship that was in in uh, local a local relationship? It started long distance. Okay. Um, we actually met when that person was in the same city as me, um, but he eventually um, moved away. Okay. Um, we weren't dating at the time when we met. Well, no, when he was in the same city, we were not dating. We ended up dating once he had rem- uh, lived in another city, so okay. it started long distance. So did you guys ever discuss about you moving where he was or he moving to you? Yes. Um, actually, he wanted me to move to him um, very early, but I wasn't ready. Um, I was in a transition with my career, and I was like, no, I'm going to stay here for now. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and I'll tell you this. As a seasoned man, a man of God, and I know the world as well because I hadn't always been walking in the Lord, and I have some setbacks sometimes too, but I have to keep it real. If you're not planning on marrying her when she moves to where you are, then she doesn't need to move where you are because the thing is, uh, is she going to move in with you? That's a no-no mm-hmm. because you're allowing yourself to be tempted. If you're attracted to the you're dating the guy because I assume that you're attracted to him, spiritually as well as physically, correct? Correct. So that's not a good move. And then if a man truly wants to marry, he's going to marry. It's bottom line. I mean, he's not going to play around with you. Some men like to hold on thinking that if you, you say you're practicing abstinence because a lot of women say they're practicing abstinence and they end up breaking, end up mm-hmm. giving in, you know. Right. Especially if they've had sex before and they know how that feeling is and they're around one another kissing and rubbing and all that other stuff. One thing leads to another. You may uh, uh, be able to hold off a few times, but eventually if you put yourself in that position, you're going to eventually fail. So you did a good thing by uh, establishing your career and not moving because you see what happened. Uh, now, did you see husband material in your ex prior to or during the relationship? Yes, I did. You, when you saw him, you say, Oh, when I, when I first saw him? Well, well, when you saw him and you started talking, uh, you say, that's husband material. Yeah, I did. Did he initiate to you that, listen, I'm a man of God. I'm practicing abstinence. I don't want to have sex until I'm married, so I want to do it right by you. Mm-hmm. Did he come to you? Oh, yeah. He was very, um, one of the things that I really like, he's, he's, he had a real relationship with God. Like, it, it wasn't about, outside of me, it was, his relationship with God had nothing to do with me because you know, a lot of times when you tell a man you are abstaining, they, most times they're probably not, um, but they would try to, adjust to your stance but he was already there I, in fact he was a virgin wow so, yeah so that's that's another thing so i didn't have to um let me say that again wow <laughs> <laughs> there, there are virgins still left there, there are two million virgins out of eight, eight billion or some people but uh there are still virgins around so i that alone that's a whole that's a whole different conversation, but that alone we'll, we'll have another show on that. <laughs> says yeah. that um he has self control, which is important for my husband to have. Okay. Um and but anyway, back to my point, he had a relationship with God, a real relationship with God. He had a vision for his life, he had goals, and he was working towards that vision with those goals. So I I want that my husband to be that way. Okay. Now how how much uh, of a difference in age were you guys? We, you are how? I'm 38. Okay, 38. Just turned 38. All right. Well, yeah, I remember when I was 38. I'm 40 now, so yeah, I remember. <laughs> uh, now, how much uh, of an age difference? He was four years. We, he was four years older than me. Okay. Okay. Four, and, and still a virgin at 42 years of age. Um. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he is now, but back then he uh, was. Okay. Okay. Well, still later in life. Yeah. Now, now I'll I'll ask this question. Are you a virgin? Yes. Men, good men of God, Christian men. I'm not trying to be a matchmaker, but this 
and, and she she doesn't have the gift of singleness because she desired to be married. I do not have the gift of singleness. Yeah, yeah. See, 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 the gift of singleness is someone who doesn't desire to be married or doesn't desire sex. She desired to be married. She wants to have sex with her husband. So she doesn't have the gift of singleness, but this woman is a virgin. And so she shouldn't be played with. No woman should be played with if she desires to be married. But you have a lot of junk out here in this dating world. It's very vicious. It's vicious out here. Even men in the church. And I'll say this from experience. A lot of men, I'm not going to necessarily say most, but I'll say probably 40% of men in church, when they meet women, they do not wait until marriage. They don't do that. And I'll go into uh, this subject on another uh, video about that. So, you said you both were uh, practicing abstinence the entire time of your relationship. Yes. Okay. Were there any times during the relationship that you or your ex got weak and were tempted to go there but didn't or did yield to temptation? Well, we know you didn't yield to temptation, right. but were there any temptations for you to go there at all? Yeah. Okay. There definitely was temptation there. Okay. Well, you you didn't yield to temptation. Yeah. So, yeah because, <laughs> because let me say this. Being tempted is not a sin, but yielding is a sin. So she held her ground by way of the Holy Spirit strengthening her within. Because anybody who knows when that lust start boiling up in you, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to say, well, okay, God, let me just go to sleep. You want to take care of that thing. And so great job. Uh, and I commend you on that. Uh, did your ex words match his actions relating to a dating and uh, marital uh, intentions? Yes, they did. Okay, they did. Because um, he was, like I said, he was trying to, because he was ready to be married. He was gonna get me to relocate soon. <laughs> so. Okay, so do you think, uh, do you think cold feet were involved, or he just got to the point that since you were not going to relocate, he wanted to just uh, end the relationship? That's what I. That's what I believe. Uh, since I eventually, eventually I did want to move, but it, it, at that point the relationship kind of shifted on his end um, and I felt the shift and so but as you can see it didn't work out because he no longer was interested in being in a relationship hmm. well uh, I can't figure it out but being a man usually when a relationship fizzles out or a man is no longer interested he usually finds somebody else that's closer to him uh, my daughter 21 years old Met a guy four years ago, Spanish guy who stays in Sweden. She's 21. I told her, don't even pursue that. Well, she did. He came down, flew down to the United States a couple of times uh, to see her. She flew up to Sweden a couple of times, just got back a couple of weeks ago to see him. And uh, I said, Markevia, the, the likelihood of their relationship lasting is not great. And of course, I said, it's, it's possible, but it's very small. Mm -hmm. I said, because when men get lonely, they like to have a woman near them where they can reach out and touch. Mm -hmm. Talking on the phone, video uh, Skyping, uh, FaceTiming, that's going to get old after a while. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I wouldn't have a long distance relationship if it was going to last uh, six months a year. I don't have that kind of time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If I know you're my wife, let's date to get to know each other. Let's determine our pros and cons, our likes and dislikes, making sure that uh, we are on one accord spiritually and let's set a date. Mm -hmm. We don't have to set a date two years from now. But the great thing about you, Chabelle, is that you are a virgin. Now, my personal opinion I think it's better for you to marry a virgin, which is the likelihood is, is not great. Mm -hmm. Most guys have had sex. Mm -hmm. Most women have had sex. And the reason I say that, I'm going to correlate it to the story in Genesis where God told Adam, Adam, you can eat from all of these trees, but don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
Because once you open up Pandora's box sexually, mm-hmm. when God, see, you're a virgin, you meet a virgin, y'all have sex, you can, can never compare yourself or compare him to nobody else because you've never had anybody. Right. He can never compare you, which means that even if it was bad, you wouldn't know it because you have no compa- <laughs> you, you have no comparison. But right. when you had multiple women and multiple men, now you're able to compare he wasn't that good. She didn't do this and she didn't do that. God has nothing to do with comparison, people. God don't want you to compare sexual partners because he only intended for you to have one sexual partner. That's the curse that is on most people today because they're looking around for the man that's going to satisfy them sexually and you're still not married. Even if that man, the best you ever had, you're not with him now. Women, Men, the best woman you ever had sexually, you're not with her now. So the thing is, sex does not keep a marriage together. So, sorry for going on that tangent, but I had, <laughs> I had to say that. So, yeah. what are some signs that you noticed at mm-hmm. some point in the relationship that the relationship had run its course and he was not the right man for you? Even though he was a virgin, he was not the right man for you. Um... He he came emotionally distant. Just yeah, distant. Um, stop calling. Not stop calling, but just the the conversation. The conversation plan. Was plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There was I was more talking about marriage now than him. Yeah. And I was more the one talking about relocating at, at that point, and just not the l- lack of interest to visit was there. Um, he, he didn't want to visit. He didn't you. want or me there either. Oh, like okay, that. Yeah. That urgency was no longer there yeah. like it was at the beginning. Yeah. So I, I asked about it uh, several times, several times, but he never uh, told me the truth until, of course, 2018. So it took, took a few times for me to tell, tell, get the truth. Well, he didn't want to. He didn't want to hurt you. I'm the kind of guy that if I'm not interested in you romantically, I will. I'm, I'm a nice guy, and so a lot of women uh, are attracted to me because I'm a friendly guy. I'm the only male in my family, and so I'm used to being around women. But if I'm not interested in you romantically, then we're gonna, I'm going to keep the conversation bland. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to talk about nothing where there's a possibility for you to think that I may like you in that way. But also, as a man, I can't speak for all men, but for my type, if I'm interested in a woman and she's constantly putting me off, putting me off, I don't chase for very long because the thing is, some women like to play that game where I'm going to make him chase me and see how long he's going to chase. Well, some guys may chase you two or three months. Well, after a while, I'm going to stop chasing you and then I'm, I'm going to move on because the thing is, I'm going to find somebody else that's going to get my attention. And then when you're interested, then I'm not going to be interested. <laughs> that, that's, that's how it works. That, that's how it works. And so the thing is, there's a you you want to get your career together. I understand yeah. that. And it's a, a big move to just up and relocate mm-hmm. everything yes. down there. Uh, you are a teacher by trade. Right. Yes. Which means that you can go anywhere in the country and get you a job. Right. But there has to be, had to have been some reservations. W- were there other reservations outside of that? Then you're Me- reestablished? Um, Relocating to another church? Yeah, uh, it's all, it's a life change. It's, it's, it's a whole different state. Um, just so many things so, so quick. And I'm like, I never, I never had to do that. Like, I never thought about, um, relocating, um, for a man, I guess. Was it a long for a man? <laughs> was, uh, was it a long distance? I mean, when I say long distance, though, was it a thousand miles? It was far. It was a twelve-hour drive. Wow. So it's twelve-hour drive. Twelve hour drive. Is probably a, a two and a half hour flight. Yes. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> All right, somewhere in the, somewhere. Okay, gotcha. All right, now, how long was the grievance process after the breakup? Oh my goodness. Um. Ooh, I'm trying, when I finally accepted, okay, this relationship is we're done. Even though it was done, I, I my mind hadn't caught up with my heart hadn't caught up with my mind that it's over. It took about well, a couple of months to accept that we are not in the relationship. But then I so then I had to deal with okay, I gotta move on. So that process took about um a year and a half 
to just finally accept, okay, I got to start back dating again, and yes, so. <laughs> I'm sure there were a lot of tears. Oh yeah, there was a lot of tears. A lot of stomach, uh, stomach pain, didn't want to eat or even, you wanted to eat a lot. Which one was it? Um, I can't remember what, not to want to eat. Not, not I wanted to eat, but I remember a lot of tears. Um, a lot of tears. Yeah. Not want, l- lack of energy to pursue goals. Motivation. Was Motivation. Just yeah, gone. for a couple of months, yeah. I couldn't. I just couldn't do nothing. <laughs> that, that's that's the grieving process. I mean, Mary, when Jesus, when her son uh, died on the cross, she knew that he was the savior of the world, and this had to be had to be done. But she grieved. And so that's a natural emotion that God gives us. And uh, throughout life, uh, hopefully you won't have very many heartbreaks as it relates to a relationship because you you seem like a great woman uh, of God. And uh, any single virgin man, <laughs> good, good looking, uh, willing to walk the way God wants you to walk, you have a single woman here. Wherever, it, wherever this video lands, it's going to be seen worldwide. So, but anyway... Uh, <laughs> Did your breakup cause you to harbor bitterness towards your ex uh, at some point in time? In the beginning, oh, I was mad. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, was, I didn't want to talk. He wanted to be casual friends. I'm like, no. I don't want to be friends with you. <laughs> I don't want to be friends. Mm. Oh, no, I don't want to talk to you. I, don't want to, well, I, ain't, I wasn't seeing him anyway, so, but I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to take out nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, well, let me just add to that. I remember a woman I was interested in, and she liked me, I liked her. And she said, I can't see myself only being friends with you. Now, at the time, uh, it took, took, probably took me a couple of days to understand it after we stopped talking. Basically, what she was saying is if we were not dating, she didn't want to be friends. Mm-hmm. Meaning that she wanted me, she didn't want me to be with anybody else. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I get uh, where you're coming from. You wanted the relationship. Uh, hopefully, you have uh, learned, I guess, uh, what you have done, or what you did wrong or didn't do right in that particular relationship that you can uh, use to uh, carry in, into the next relationship. You know, because we're, we're, we're living and, and we're learning each day yeah. as we go. You know, regardless of how old you are. Yeah. Uh, now, what steps did you take eventually to wean yourself away from your ex? And was it hard to do? Um, it wasn't hard to not contact him, I would say. I guess, well, you know, actually, two weeks later, I was in that whole mad, like, why don't you do this? You know, so I would... <laughs> <laughs> so I did text him. I got a response. It was just, I said, I'm not going to text him no more. But I did do that. So, but after that, I was pretty much okay with, you know, us not talking. I just, because I knew when, it just, it was so weird because even though we were together for a long time, when he said it was over, it was like, okay, I, I, that was though me wanting to call him. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't going to do that, especially if you was the one let me go. So, but anyway, um... The steps I took, I went on a fast, actually, okay. after I realized, okay, when we had a final conversation about the whole thing, because when, t- when he broke up with me, I got off the phone. I didn't want to talk to you. <laughs> I got off the Inst- phone instantly. Okay. Um, and, well, you, but, you didn't say, okay, bye. Me. No, I didn't okay, do bye. that. Okay. I, I, okay. I did say I'm getting off the phone, and I got off the phone. And bye, boy. Two, <laughs> two days later, um, we had a conversation and just to kind of, like, close it officially mm, okay. and just to ask questions that I may had and just you know get his take on some things and that was it but uh, so after that a uh, couple of days later I started a fast because I knew I was gonna need God to get me out of this like I just there was no way I was gonna be able to handle that on my own and God don't want you to try to handle life on your own these situations happen and when people try to handle life on their own Satan is just sitting sitting over there and say, yeah, yeah, don't handle it on your own. Uh, go and put his tire on flat. Go and go go over to his car and key his car up. Mess up his paint job. Or even something worse. Mm-hmm. Because people have done things. Do. People have actually killed folks. Right. For right. stuff like that. Yes. For, and, and then you're now in jail yes. for the rest of your life or 20 or 30 years or... Sometimes people commit suicide. It's not worth it, people. It's not. If you, the, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, 
But joy comes in the morning. Now, this is for somebody who's walking in the Lord, but that principle still applies to somebody who's not saved, meaning that if you just wait, things won't always be so bad. It's going to become better at some point in time. Right. You, you're going to have to suffer through that low moment. Those low moments are when you really find out so much about yourself. Yes. Because you're really yeah. being groomed. You're being... Uh, God is, is, is testing your character and building your character during those low moments. So, uh, now, I think I may know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Your current relationship with your ex, are you guys cordial? Do you talk every now and then? Uh, or has the bridge been burned? Um, we do not talk right now. Not because I'm bitter. I have any bitterness. We just don't talk. But... Mm-hmm. The last time I did communicate with him, it was through email, actually. Um, and it was initiated by me. I was just asking a question. It was uh, back in 2019. No, wait. I think, yeah, I think 2019 when I sent the email. But it was 2020 when I got my response um, from him. How so, many months? Oh, it was months. Wow. It, it pretty much was half a year. So, so you figured that man, he don't he don't give a care about me no more. I mean, because because before when you send an email or send a message, he respond right away. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I, I when he re- <laughs> when he replied, I laughed actually. I laughed because I'm like, what did I say? I was- <laughs> and I laughed because of the extent of time of the response. So that's a whole. I don't know the. I don't know the story behind his responding taking so long, but I just laugh and I was very like talking in email. You can't you can't read people's tone, but my words were not words of bitterness. Yeah. Um. I don't know how he felt because I didn't I didn't ask, but it was like I was talking to. For me, I was responding to an old friend. Okay. So I didn't have I didn't wasn't mad. Well, that's when I knew. Okay, I'm I'm better. You got you got peace. Yes. All right. Now, Shamel. Where can people go to purchase your book and support your sales? Uh, there's two ways they can purchase my book. They can purchase on my website, um, www.breakingdowncj.com, or you can go on Amazon and purchase it. But if you purchase it from, off the website, it's, I sign them and mail them to the people. Okay, now, <laughs> let's say that again, but a little slower. <laughs> uh, because I'm trying to keep up with it. Slow it down so that they can hear it again. Okay, that's www.breakingitdowncj.com. That's where you can purchase uh, my book, and then you can also go on Amazon as well to purchase a copy. But if you purchase on my website, which is www.breakingitdowncj.com, I pr- sign them personally and mail them out to you. All right, and this is a copy of yeah. her new book, Girl. Forget all that. <laughs> Moving forward after the relationship ends. It seems like it's some attitude with that, you know. <laughs> some some Christian attitude. <laughs> Christian ain't Christians ain't perfect now, y'all. And, and you know, people say, and you pole to be a Christian. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I mean I mean you, you had had uh Paul was a Christian, but when he was Saul, he wasn't a Christian, but look what he did but prior to him being a Christian. Right. And and look what David did, uh while he was a, a man of God. Right. He did wrong. He got mad. He got angry. The Bible said be angry but sin not. But when we sin as a Christian, we're convicted by the Holy Spirit and we say, Lord, forgive me. And God said as far as the east is from the west, he don't remember your sins anymore. All right. I will put a clickable link of Shamel's book in the description section of this video so you all can go and support this young lady. Now, back to the interview. Now, this is a personal question, but this is an adult Christian talk show where we keep it real and don't sugarcoat anything, but we keep it professional and classy. Did you and your ex become sexually involved in any form? No. All right. Mm -hmm. That's emphatically no. Correct? (laughs) Correct. Emphatically no. All right. Do you think your ex bought into your practicing abstinence in the relationship prior to dating you, but got fed up because you wouldn't give in? Well, no, because he had already had his goal for himself that he's waiting. Okay. Um, and he never said he was changing his mind about it. Okay. And did you have any doubts that he was 
being truthful or were, were there any suspicions? Because you know that most men are not practicing that. Correct. Did you have any doubts initially or did you say, okay, I'm taking him at his word? I did not have any doubt. Well, also before I, I was told by someone else, a mutual friend, that's how we got connected through a mutual friend. She told me that he was. And so, and I said, wow, I need to be, you know? And so, um, and we met eventually and you know, here it is. And, but so when he, I don't think, he didn't have to say it, I already knew what was, you know, what was the real story. So I believe, believe if he, if I saw him today and he still said, say, I would believe him. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, let me say this to piggyback off of what she just said. Being a virgin, meaning that you're not having sex of any kind. Now, you can be a virgin not having uh, sex where you're being penetrated by a man as a woman or a, a, a man uh, penetrating a woman, but masturbation breaks your virginity or using a, a dildo or a vibrator breaks your virginity and you cannot be a born again virgin. You can't become a virgin again once you break your hymen. Uh, now, you may not have had sex with a man as a woman, but you can't be a virgin if you have experienced anything penetrating your vagina outside of going to a gynecologist and him giving you a pap smear, you know. Now, Shamel, did God tell you the man that you were dating was for you or did your flesh tell you he was for you? Um, I had reservations about if he was the one. Um, that's part of the reason why I wanted to move to see if this was really something I wanted to commit to. Um, because being long distance, it's, it's it's something you just don't get until you in that person's right there in front of you. And so I, so that was my reason to wanted to move. So I still have reservations about if I wanted to spend the rest of my life with this person. Yeah. Even though he's a good, I feel to this day, I think he's a good person, good man. But I just wasn't sure if I wanted to go all the way there. So hindsight, twenty twenty. And you're looking at everything now with a big lens. Do you regret uh, the day that you guys started dating? Oh, no. 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 Because you learned from that experience. Yeah, I learned from that experience. Um, I grew just as a woman, as a Christian, um, everything. I, I I don't regret it. Now I regret not ending it sooner than when I got the feeling like, like this, he not... Is something wrong. <laughs> okay. All right. So what are some steps that you took in order to get over the breakup and move forward? Um, like I said, the first thing I did, I went on a fad because I just needed to some work, a foundation to start with, an anchor, and just um, go, I went from there, started a fast, and then I started just reading books on all kinds of stuff, you know, pain, heartbreak. Um, these are spiritual books. Most of them were. Uh, I did go to therapy. I had never been to therapy a day in my life. And I decided I needed to go to therapy. Christian therapy? Yes. I specifically asked a therapist that I already knew. I said, do you know any Christian therapists that you can recommend to me? And I think I asked, I don't know if I said this prior to her asking other, others about, or uh, well, seeking others, but I did say at some point, I want a male therapist. And <laughs> now, 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 why why would you select a male ther therapist? Because most women would want a female. No, I wanted a male. I specifically said I prefer. She gave me a male and a female. And I said, I'm going to choose the male therapist. Okay. And I think it's because I wanted to hear. I think, it, it's a good, I think that was a good choice because he's going to, he's been through the stuff and has probably hurt women like that guy hurt you even, even though... And men have been we've seen all of that <laughs> yeah. and now now do you think uh by him being a male therapist that he gave you uh the, the answers and the insight from his perspective that you wouldn't have gotten from a female um i think for me it was more so i needed to hear a man say what i needed to hear okay. um of course he got the clinical background to to back up he can't really he can't he can it, it was, that's what I need to hear. I need to hear from a man because I felt, I guess I felt like 
if for me if I had a woman a female therapist it was almost like talking to my friends okay. and I'm like I want I need to hear a male voice because a male hurt me so I need to hear a male voice and I need him to be a Christian male voice and I think um he he did very well in combining the two the science behind it and then I'll be Christian to it okay yeah well, and the Bible says for a Christian to seek out Christian counsel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you say whether male or female, and you decide to chose, uh, choose a <laughs> male, and uh, that's not a bad thing, whether you chose a female or right, male. Right, right. Uh, now, are all the books that you've written uh, centered around your life story and the experiences you've encountered, but with a Christian moral to the story? Yes. Okay. Great, great, great. I'm all about that. I'm all about that. You, you tell your side. Uh, your side doesn't have to be perfect, but as Christians, we are being perfected daily. Right. You know. Uh, so is every aspect of your current book nonfiction, or is there any fiction included in the book to give it an extra excitement or pizzazz uh, with a modern appeal? No, it's all... All real. All, all real. Uh, re- really it's real. It's all real. Really real. Okay. Now... When 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 women or young ladies hear about your story of practicing abstinence until marriage, do you get a lot of questions from them? And if so, what type of questions do you get? <laughs> Girl, is, it, is it hard to do? How do you do it? <laughs> um, it's interesting because originally I was trying to help teens um, realize you should wait, you know, or just at least think about all the things that happen as a result of sex not just that mo- one moment of you know pleasure yeah um but a lot of young adult women like 20 early 20s like yeah many early 20s will ask me how do you do this mm-hmm. and so crucify that flesh <laughs> <time. laughs> and so i guess they're wanting to know because you like i said you know parents tell you or your parents may tell you or adults may tell you like wait but no one really talks about the why or how do I do this? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's one of the things I wanted to do in the beginning, like talk about how I do it. So those are the main questions. How do you do it? And I think people get this misconception that because I haven't um, done that, it's I don't have those urges. Like, no, I am still human. Yeah. Like before you did it, you weren't me. <laughs> so <laughs> so but you gave it to the urge. Yeah. And um they, that's my main, that's her main question. How do you do this? So I go into, you know, I have to have boundaries. Um, I can't do certain things. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's no, a lot. <laughs> no, no phone ringing at midnight. Hey, uh, Shamel, what's up? What you, what you up to? Uh, I'm just, uh, looking at TV. Hey, can I come over for a few minutes? That's a no. Because <laughs> uh, now it may seem so strict, but if you are hot in your flesh, and you let somebody come over at midnight, men don't come over at midnight wanting to leave the house without something happening. I'm right. just letting you know. Right. Uh, and that goes for some church men too. A church man shouldn't call a woman at nighttime talking about coming over at midnight because he want to have sex. He don't just want you to talk. Yeah, you can talk to him over the phone. You, you need some counseling. I can talk to you on the phone. So, so the thing is, you have to really uh, be aware of the the schemes of the enemy because he doesn't come up with new schemes he, he knows your propensities he knows all the things that has happened happened in your uh family's history and he knows what, what your weaknesses are and so uh she's protected herself and you know listen man i, I if, when you call me or you post online i'm about to get married say if, if he's a virgin say he's a virgin so that, so that you'll make some people mad because they'll probably, well, something must be wrong. Something wrong with him because he, he's a virgin, right? Oh, yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah, some, something must be wrong with her. Now, when when a guy is not a virgin, but he decides he wants to practice abstinence and not have sex, something must be wrong with him. He must be gay. <laughs> but God, that's what God... No! This is, you know, a lot of times it's Christians saying this. Yeah. Well, but the thing is, listen... Either 100% of the Bible is infallible, inerrant, or it's not. Right. You can't pick and choose which part of the Bible you want to abide by. You know, that's hypocritical. 
So now, what do you want people to get out of this book when they purchase and read your book? Take your time. <laughs> um, I want you to know that it's a process. Um, you have to walk out the process. And what you are experiencing is not new. It's just you are just the person experiencing it. Um, if there are people before you, after you, that are experiencing the same things that you are experiencing be, experience because of this relationship ending. Um, and know that, uh, now in my case, I was rejected um, in this relationship, but sometimes you may have been the one that rejected the other person. Uh, but just know that um, you still have value regardless of how this relationship ended. Um, that was one of my main things I got from this breakup like I had to figure out who I was and hence the shirt woman of words I have on I, that was that was a very important lesson for me to learn before I even started back dating and then get married um, to learn who Shamel is so Shamel knows her worth right she knows her value yeah your value is not dictated by uh, society right but established by God right okay now were you ever the heartbreaker yeah yes um yes and i did, was and did the man also have the same type of emotions that you displayed with the guy who broke up with you um did he ask I you know. why i don't know did he call you say what but why what did i do i thought we were doing well yeah they yeah well yeah they they did they did do that um and i explained myself <laughs> she's a heartbreaker <laughs> Baby face, baby face, heartbreak. <laughs> oh my goodness! But those, that was like I was like a teenager, or or yeah, way way before way right before oh. my twenties. So oh, it okay. really wasn't. Um, you, still, you were still with yeah, me. Here. right. So yeah, it was my so like after right after high school. Okay, <laughs> now what's your overall message in a nutshell, summarizing your book? If you were to describe your book from cover to cover. Give a couple of minutes of what your book is about and so that the young ladies or even the young men who look at this video or even women who are in their 30s or 40s or 50s because you have a lot of women who are struggling uh, with breakups, with divorces, who's been divorced 10, 15 years. And they're afraid to get in this dating world. They should be. There's a lot of sharks out there. I mean, you should be very afraid. I mean, <laughs> even being a Christian woman, uh, not the kind of fear that's paralyzed. You should always trust in the Lord, but it's dangerous out there. I, I'm it telling is. you, I'm a man. I'm a man. Women say, a lot of women say, all men are dogs. Well, all men are not dogs, but 65% of men are dogs, <laughs> which means you have 35% of men who are good men who are looking for a good woman, but... A lot of women who say they want good guys, when they meet a guy who's good, then you try to use him because he's too nice. Either he, you want a good guy or you don't. So don't take advantage of a guy because he's nice. Because you have plenty of guys out there who are not so nice, and they'll tell you what you want to hear. You know, they'll tell you everything you want to hear. Like I, like I always say, every bad man comes with a warning label. But most women choose not to read the fine print because they feel like oh i can change him <laughs> he's gonna change eventually well ladies let me tell you i'm a seasoned man i've been to five different continents 20 plus different countries no woman can change me the only one that can change you is god through jesus christ and you have to submit your will to god in order to be changed a woman can't change you now the man may like your sex he might like to be around you now, after a while, that's going to get old and he's going to find somebody else who's giving him the same thing, maybe better than you. So anytime you try to keep a man because of your body, your body parts, that gets, that gets old after a while. So in a nutshell, summarize your book. Summarize the book. So uh, basically, pain is real. Um, it, healing takes time. I don't know what that time may look for you, but know that God is there every step of the way. And he is the ultimate healer. Um, he heals the broken heart. Um, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't, a breakup shouldn't be taken lightly. Um, it can have a very, a lot of 
um, negative effects if we don't take the proper time to heal. And that, like I said, that may look different. That time frame may look different for you. For me, it was about a year and a half, but that may not be your story. Uh, but just know that you are not alone. Um, I go through each part of my healing process to let you know that there were some real raw emotions and that I took all of them to God, to therapy, friends that I trust that I could be vulnerable with, with, and then, um, but God, like I said, God is the ultimate healer and he's really the one that can, um, take care of all of it. All right. Is there any final thoughts you would like to say to my audience about your experience or helpful advice they can benefit from? Um, I'm going to share something some, that someone told me, actually two people, my therapist and a friend, um, don't allow the breakup to, um, uh, affect your self-esteem. And my therapist told me to, when I got done with the sessions for that particular, uh, event in my life, he said, focus on your self-esteem. And so, um, get into, get, just get into the Bible and to learn what God says about you outside of your titles and yeah, all the titles you may hold, your accomplishment, even your failures, all of that is has nothing to do with who you are. Okay, and I'll add to that. Don't judge the next person you date based on the one you dated before because all men are not the same. All women are not the same. We have similar characteristics, but we're not monolithic creatures. We are different. So that's my advice to you. A lot of women get sour on men completely because they've been dogged out by other men. But look and see what did you have to do in that situation? What role did you play in your own demise? Did you see some things that you ignored, but you thought that you could handle them, handle handle them, and uh, that you were gonna overcome him by your cunning and your experience? Well, that's not the case all the time. So don't judge uh, every book by the cover that you helped to create in your past relationship. Can I, can I add something to sure. what you just said? Um, he said, don't, you know, judge the next person by your past relationship. And I would say, it's important to heal before you start dating again. You know, that old, some people say that it's better to, how do you get over an old, a past relationship, get into a new one? That's not the exact phrase that they say, but how do you get over, how do you get over a new man, get, get over an old man, get a new man? No, it's absolutely horrible. So, but I'm saying this because when I get back into the dating scene, I was, I ran into someone who was not healed from their pet with well, their marriage actually yeah. um and that affected what was going on with us and so um so like they say hurt people hurt people and that is so true so very. it's very important to heal and he recognized it later that he was not healed and he told me he needed to wait and so and this is a man saying this so if you know a man is addressing this is saying this and being vulnerable about it you know it has to be um serious to heal before you start another relationship so Jamil, i have one final question for you being 38 years of age have you set a limit on the age range that you would date a man yes up or down uh, 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 uh. As for as someone older than you, as uh, as someone younger than you. Oh, both. Yeah, I've I've set a limit on both. Um, the younger is kind of tricky. Uh, well, both is tricky actually to me. Setting older, um, it just and it depends on my goals too. Um, if I want to have children, um, that's gonna play a part into how old I want the man to be, or how or how young too. So yeah, I do have set a age limit. Well, what, 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 what's the age limit? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to help you. Uh, out here. <laughs> um, for older men, um, four to five years is, is enough. Cause okay. I, so that's 42, 43. Mm -hmm. Once you start passing that 45, it's kind of like, um, uh, I don't know okay. about that. Um, or just leaving that decade that I'm in, okay. it's, it's, it gets a little tricky. So, uh, younger. Younger. Just the same. Who, or two, two years? Oh well, yeah, it's gonna be the smaller. Yeah, probably, smaller two, probably two. I've never dated a younger man. Okay. Um, younger men have approached me, but I have never dated a younger you, you, man. Because you still look fairly, fairly young. Thank I mean, you could you could pass for your uh, early thirties, if if not 30, 29. So yeah, uh, that's understandable. So that's understandable. I wouldn't date. They were very young, but I would say I'll two years. 
Yes. Okay. Younger. All right. So, Shamil, before you leave, I'd like for you to sign your name on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Banner, which is behind you. Now, you can uh, turn up, turn around, stand up, or uh, just don't knock it over. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stand up. Okay. Just sign. Sign, sign anyway. You don't have to sign next to. Okay, I'm not signing. My whole life, whole name on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign your name, whatever you feel comfortable with. Oh, that's it, huh? (laughs) Shamil. You know her by her first name, like Beyonce. (laughs) Shamil, right? Well, well, you know, Shamil, I didn't have to break this out on you. (laughs) This is a red flag, and I've had a show. Oh, I had to break this out on, a, on a, a female caller to the show. She wasn't a live guest, but she was a good guest as, as it relates to uh, her, her her conversation with the topic. And the topic was uh, my, my first three topics was talking about the vibrator use uh, for women. Uh, but it got over 50,000, 50,000 views. Uh, <laughs> but I had to throw a red flag up on her, but... Uh, like I said, she was a good guest outside outside of that. I didn't have to break, break out the red flag on you, and I knew I wouldn't have to, but just in case, I, I, I had it there. Well, I would like to thank you, Shamel, for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for just playing your book. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I will uh, post her book link on the description section. Uh, of this video and also uh, in editing I will put her digital book uh, on the video screen so that you can see that make sure you go and purchase girl forget all that <laughs> moving forward after a relationship ends by author woman of God Shamil Jackson all right let's give Shamil a round of applause thank you, thank you.